Great North Woods, to the Rock Off Coast, and streaming live in HD worldwide at foxbangor.com. More people choose Good Morning Maine. Hello everyone, today on Good Morning Maine, an elderly woman crashes through the side of a Bangor dental office. Plus, a state lawmaker wants to end the practice of clearing out homeless encampments around the state. And the latest from Bradford, where residents have put a hold on constructing an affordable housing community. Good morning and welcome to Good Morning Maine. I'm Emma Smith. And I'm Craig Colson. Thank you for joining us. We'll have all the day's news coming up, but first to check out that forecast. And it looks like a cloudy day ahead for us today. Maybe uh, the potential for some rain showers here and there. Uh, uh, a little foggy out there this morning, yep. but maybe we'll get lucky and see a little bit of sunshine. That's the way it's been the last few days. You know, we think it's going to be very cloudy and it turns out to be a little bit better. Yeah, yesterday in Bangor, so. you could watch those heavy, dark blue clouds yeah. kind of roll in and then it started to sprinkle in the PM hours. Yep. yep, seems like it'll be like that today. More of the same. Here's Devin Biggs with the forecast. All righty, thank you very much. Happy Thursday. Your first weather forecast brought to you by Joe's Market. Discover Joe's Market, 102 Garland Street in Bangor. Your one-stop shop for groceries, fine wines, and craft beers. Quality and variety await you at Joe's. As we get into things this morning, areas of dense fog is developing out there. At least at this point, though, no dense fog advisories are posted. But either way, be careful with the fog out there this morning. A half mile or less visibility definitely being noted out there in many spots, which will make it hard to see at times. But otherwise, though, we're going to be watching out for some showers. Just like we had a little bit last night across parts of Washington County. It looks like a few more showers developing in some spots, too. We'll be watching for more of that, especially as we head towards the afternoon period. As we zoom things out, doesn't look like much right now. Just a few scattered showers in some spots. But we'll start to see more development though during the afternoon period, especially over us. So definitely make sure to have the umbrellas handy whenever you head outside. So clouds today to those showers developing during the afternoon period. Some of those lingering, especially in the evening as well. Maybe a few breaks in the clouds as we head towards early Friday morning. So at least it won't be raining all the time, right? But as for the winds, not too bad today. Roughly at around 5 miles per hour at best. But we'll start to notice an, an increase in the winds as we head towards tomorrow. Possibly some sustained winds up to 12, maybe 15 miles per hour in a few spots. So for today, lower sea it's mostly cloudy, some showers out there, and that west wind getting up to around 5 miles per hour. Your hourly forecast for the rest of the morning and afternoon period, mostly cloudy skies, showers moving in for the afternoon period, temperatures in the 60s. Your full five-day forecast is coming up. All right, thank you, Devin. A shocking moment and a close call yesterday when a car crashed into a Bangor dental office. According to Bangor Assistant Fire Chief Greg Hodge, an elderly woman pulled into the parking lot of Creative Dental Solutions on Broadway around 1.45 yesterday. He says the woman tried to apply the brakes, but instead she accidentally accelerated, causing the car to crash into the main lobby of that building. She went in through the uh, main entrance and has essentially uh, partially come out the side of the building over here. Uh, we're extremely fortunate uh, the, the uh, dental office was closed for lunch at that time. Fifteen minutes uh, later and the lobby would have been full of people, but there was nobody in the lobby and there wasn't even anybody at the front desk. So there were no injuries with this at all. Well, no one was injured and Assistant Chief Hodge says the elderly driver was able to exit the vehicle on her own. Crews remained on the scene yesterday afternoon to stabilize the building in order to pull that vehicle out. No word yet on how that's going to impact the business at that local dental office. An Ellsworth police officer made an improper turn before crashing into another vehicle. That is the conclusion of an investigation by the Hancock County Sheriff's Office. The crash happened at the intersection of the Bucksport Road and Twin Hill Road on September 24th. Ellsworth police officer Zachary Chandler attempted to use the breakdown lane to perform a U-turn after spotting a speeding vehicle going east. The marked cruiser allegedly struck the side of a vehicle going west, causing it to roll over several times before coming to rest in a ditch. Two New Hampshire women were involved in the crash and suffered minor injuries and were taken to the hospital. According to Hancock County Sheriff's Lieutenant Jake Day, the turn made by the Ellsworth officer was improper because it was on a hill near an intersection. The investigation also concluded the cruiser lights and sirens were not on at the time of the crash. Meanwhile, the city of Ellsworth held an emergency meeting last night to update the public on their progress as they continue repairing a portion of Bayside Road. Heavy rains and high winds from last weekend's storm washed away a portion of the road and the culvert that was previously there. According to Ellsworth City Manager Glenn Mosher, the plan is to insert a new culvert and bolster erosion control. Mosher says the, that will cost the city roughly ten dollars to $15,000. 
He says it is a temporary fix, the best option, though, that they have at the moment. I feel that this is the most uh, economic, economically responsible uh, decision to make at this point under the circumstances of, of DOT coming through and, and doing a full culvert replacement in the very near future. Well, Mosher says he believes this portion of Bayside Road could be back to two lanes as early as next week. The Maine Department of Transportation is expected to construct a new box culvert in that area by 2026. A man from Penobscot has received his sentence for selling illegal drugs. 38-year-old Christopher Bucage was sentenced this week to spend 15 years in prison for trafficking in fentanyl. According to court records, Bucage and another person were stopped by Bucksport Police in October of 2021. A search of their vehicle revealed about 60 grams of fentanyl. Following his arrest, authorities say Bucage continued to sell drugs. He'll serve 180 months in prison, followed by four years of supervised release. Homeless encampments remain a growing issue in cities like Bangor and Portland, and now lawmakers are proposing legislative action on how to handle the situation. Our Grace Blanchard spoke with local representatives about their efforts to find a solution. State Representative Ambreen Rana of House District 21 in Bangor has proposed a set of bills that would ban the clearing of homeless encampments across the state. So encampment suites don't actually solve the problem of homelessness. They just move the problem and inflict more unnecessary trauma on an already vulnerable population. This comes after the clearing of the Valley Avenue encampment in Bangor earlier this year. People are forced to pick up all of their belongings and only are able to take what they can carry. Oftentimes they lose, they lose their belongings, they lose important documents or identification documents. Rana is not alone in wanting to find solutions to this pressing problem. Representative Grayson Luckner is proposing the establishment of areas for emergency encampments. He said in a statement, quote, Sweeping encampments has been shown to increase mortality among our neighbors experiencing homelessness. Allowing for sanctioned sites where people can camp at night in appropriate areas could provide for better sanitation and safety precautions while the state and municipalities work to build the housing and shelter space we need to end the crisis. Um, these conversations will definitely happen together and my hope is as we're taking each step that we're making sure that we are communicating and building relationships with our neighbors who are in encampments. Representative Rana says it is likely the bills will go before legislature in January given their emergent situation. These are human beings that are members of our community. They are our neighbors and they do deserve dignity and respect and if we're just sweeping them from encampments, my question is where else do they have to go? In Bangor, Grace Blanchard for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. For the first time ever, a Maine's public advocate has requested the removal of an electricity supplier from the list of companies allowed to do business in Maine. The public advocate is asking the Public Utilities Commission to revoke Electricity Maine's license. He accuses the provider of price gouging, allegedly charging nearly three times the standard offer rate. He says done without customer's consent. Only about 10% of Mainers choose the competitive electric price over the standard offer. Public advocate Bill Harwood says their offer has collected calls of what he describes as blindsided electricity main customers who thought they were getting a good deal below the standard rate. But after a one-year contract were switched to a variable rate, at times double or triple the standard offer. Eventually, that mar wholesale market price goes above standard offer and at that point it becomes critical when that contract ends that consumers be informed of what their rights are and give given the opportunity to go back to standard offer. Harwood is also asking that customers be given a refund for the difference between what they were charged and the standard offer. Our media partners at WGME reached out to Electricity Maine's parent company, Spark Energy, for comment. We have not heard back. A hearing is expected this winter, giving Electricity Maine a chance to weigh in, and then a decision from the PUC will likely come in the spring. Well, we are now less than one month away until this year's election, but you don't have to wait until Election Day to cast your ballot. Our Corey Bouchard spoke with the Secretary of State to learn more about how you can make sure your voice is heard without even waiting in those long lines. This is what voters need to know. Everywhere across the state, absentee ballots are available. 
for any reason or no reason at all. Secretary of State Shenna Bellows is Maine's top election officer. She is charged with making sure that every Maine election is free, fair, and accessible to the public. And that means multiple ways to cast your ballot. You can go online to our online absentee ballot request service. You can call your municipal clerk and ask that a ballot be mailed to you. You can fill out an application and submit that, or you can go in person. Here in Maine, we have no excuse in-person absentee voting. Casting an absentee ballot isn't hard, says Secretary Bellows, but you have to make sure you follow the directions listed on the ballot, and that includes what you have to do after you have made your choices. Every absentee ballot must be in an absentee ballot envelope and signed by the voter. That's for tracking purposes. And we have an online absentee ballot tracking system that allows voters to see when their request has been processed, when the ballot has been issued, and after they complete the ballot and return it to the clerk, they can see that that ballot has been received and processed by the clerk and accepted or not. According to Secretary Bellows, Maine has the gold standard of election security, which she believes is why Maine was number one in the nation for voter participation in the 2022 election. But that hasn't stopped certain conspiracy theories from popping up. One of the top conspiracies we hear is, what if people just photocopy ballots and drop them in the drop box? I'm here to tell you, if a ballot is not in the corresponding absentee ballot return envelope, with the clear signature of the voter that requested it, it will not be counted. Secretary Bellows adds that if you do vote early, your vote is final and you can't make any changes to the ballot if you change your mind on a referendum question. In Augusta, I'm Corey Bouchard for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. The war in Israel has already had serious impacts here in the U.S. Yesterday, students at the University of Maine gathered for a candlelight vigil on campus to show solidarity with the people of Israel. Students wanted to honor the lives lost, to share their grief, and support each other. The vigil was put together by the University of Maine Hillel Group. They stood together, held candles, and prayed. We are told that students here do have friends and family in Israel and surrounding countries, so this war is very personal to them, and they are in mourning. Another reason they sought comfort in each other. We were asked not to film faces and to keep a distance from the vigil. Uh, some students are concerned about their personal safety in situations like this. Fortunately, the University of Maine is a very safe campus, mm -hmm. and we did make sure to provide a security presence at this particular event in order to make sure everyone was protected. Gordon says the Division of Student Life is working to support those affected by the war on campus. He also stressed that there's a counseling center for anyone on campus who's feeling distressed. Just a tough situation, and we'll have much more on the situation in Israel coming up a little later on in the broadcast. Absolutely. I'm glad there's folks at UMaine that are working together to make sure everybody's yeah. okay. The time now is 8.13. Coming up next on Good Morning Maine, residents of Bradford voted to block a plan to build a new affordable housing community. We'll hear from both sides about what the future may hold for the project. But first, another check of your local weather forecast. Mostly cloudy with a chance of showers today. The highs will be around 61 degrees. Partly cloudy with showers overnight. Lows dropping down to around 40. Tomorrow a day much like today. Partly cloudy with showers with highs around 57. When the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers wants to know the local forecast, they log on to foxbangor.com. The International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers are currently looking for licensed journeyman wiremen. If interested, please reach out to Nick Paquette at nick at ibew1253. Are plumbing problems giving you a headache? Look no further than Sprague's Plumbing Solutions. With more than 10 years experience, Sprague's Plumbing Solutions has the knowledge to assist with your plumbing issues. Whether it's a service, remodel, new build, or commercial, we've got you covered. For reliable, professional plumbing services, call Sprague's Plumbing Solutions today for a free estimate. 951-1637. We're here to make your plumbing problems disappear.
It's your journey. Own every mile in the Hyundai Santa Fe with America's best warranty. Lease an all-wheel drive Santa Fe for $279 a month or get 2.99% APR or up to 3000 bonus cash. See your Bangor Hyundai dealer. This or that. This or that. You can do this. Can you Angie that? You can do this. Can you Angie that? Connect with skilled professionals to get all your home projects done well. Get started today at Angie.com. There's a reason why Maine State's slogan is the way life should be. It's because our beautiful state is full of humble people, workers, business owners, and neighbors making a difference in their community. I'm always looking for positive and encouraging news stories about ordinary people doing extraordinary things. How fortunate am I that I get to share these special stories? Watch the good news weekdays on Fox 22 News at 10. After a lopsided 95 to 5 vote, the town of Bradford has issued a moratorium on building new rooming houses, shelters, campgrounds, and tiny home parks. This comes after the nonprofit Bangor Friends of Affordable Housing bought 35 acres of land along Middle Road in Bradford with the hopes of constructing a new residential complex. Our Doug Banks spoke with the nonprofit's president and Bradford Select Board Chairman to find out how both parties plan to move forward. After months of meetings and deliberation, the town of Bradford has put a 180-day moratorium in place on any proposals concerning rooming houses, shelters, campgrounds, and tiny homes. This directly impacts Bangor Friends of Affordable Housing, whose president, Michael Tuller, had begun construction on what he described as an affordable housing complex. Residents were concerned, however, that the project will turn into a homeless encampment. Tuller says he was constructing homes for those dealing with hardship. Make sure that uh, what their fears are aren't going to come to light, which is you know, a drug-infested camp, encampment or something. According to Tuller, he went into the latest meeting to give information to residents and select board members, but wasn't able to. It was a little surprising because I went out there to try to, you know, see if anybody wanted more information. And during the meeting, they do have a rule for special meetings that unless you have a two-thirds majority, you can't talk if you're not a resident. And so, you know, I wasn't able to talk. According to Bradford Select Board Chairman Errol Hansen, he says one of the concerns raised was transportation services. In part of a statement given to ABC7 Fox 22, Hansen says, We were initially surprised when we first heard about the Bangor Friends of Affordable Housing construction. This moratorium allows us to take a pause and possibly look at new regulations and the town's current land use ordinances concerning this matter. The other option is to go to Selectman's meeting and say, okay, this is what it takes to buy me out and I'll go somewhere else where the resistance isn't as high. In Bradford, Doug Banks, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Well, meanwhile, you Maine students came together to discuss solutions to food insecurity during the Hunger Dialogue and Climate Action Summit yesterday. The Maine Hunger Dialogue started back in 2014 to spark conversations about college hunger. Starting last year, the climate action aspect was also added to the event to highlight the connection between food waste and climate change. Horticulture professional Lynn Holland says food insecurity among college students isn't always obvious, but it's a serious issue. Hunger amongst college students is a hidden problem. And we all think of back when we were in college, maybe we had a meal plan, and towards the end of the semester, we had to eat ramen. But it's much bigger than that. It's about that non-traditional student that works and comes to school in the evening and it's all they can do to fill the gas tank to get to the job and then to class and now there's no room to buy groceries or no opportunity to buy groceries. The summit wrapped up with an opportunity for student teams to apply for $500 mini grants which are used to make a difference on campus or in the local community. Leaders with the Maine Arts Academy cut the ribbon on a new school facility in Augusta yesterday. The building, which was a former veterans care facility, is now home to the Maine Arts Academy, a public charter school for grades 9 through 12, offering dance, music, theater, visual arts, and film. Heather King, the head of school for Many Arts Academy, says they are grateful to have found such a perfect building. 
The space had three cafeterias when we bought it, so those cafeterias are being utilized by the arts. Our dancers are going to have a dance space. We're actually went under construction for a dance space. Our visual arts students have a much larger space now, which was a cafeteria. Our theater students have a larger space to work in. So the building was really conducive for a school, and it's so nice that um, it was a veteran's home, and there's so many stories. King adds that 247 students are currently enrolled at the school from 13 main counties. And you know, Craig, I'm so mm -hmm. glad that kids have different opportunities for different types of schools. A close family member of mine mm -hmm. went to a charter school in Maine and Unity, and that really kind of saved them because the regular 9 through 12 was not really vibing right. with them, and this helped them kind of open up their opportunities and feel a lot better and do a lot yeah. better because kids have different interests. Sure. You well, know? Vocational schools are kind of like that too. It right. allows kids to focus on what are they interested in and what yeah. they might want to do as a job down the line. And so. that can really encourage them in all the best ways. Yeah. Yep. Pretty neat. Yeah. All right. The time now is 821. After the break, the main teacher of the year was chosen yesterday in Portland. We'll hear how his own fifth grade teacher inspired him. That story and more as Good Morning Maine continues. At the end of the day, that's what we do this for, is to watch the next generation blossom. I would much rather be here than sitting at a desk and on a computer. Women in today's world can do this. Newton will drop off one of his daughters to pick up maybe a tractor that we've been working on. They hop right in it. You can just tell it's not their first rodeo. As we've moved forward, we've looked at where can we get the most bang for our buck on the technology side. Deere is just a leader. Experience United, your local John Deere dealer. I'm 82 years old and I have collapsed arches, which means the first thing that hits the ground is the bone in my, my arch. I came to Comfort Shoes four years ago because I couldn't walk without pain. And she spent so much time on my feet getting the right shoe and we finally found the right pair. Once you made these orthotics for me, I have no pain. These are so comfortable. I have no discomfort. I feel like I could go running. And I thank you and Comfort Shoes for that. It's been a great summer at Dorsey Furniture, but it's time to start thinking about fall. Our new fall introductions are arriving daily and we need to make room. This means big discounts on selected items. How big? Half off. We didn't stop with just a few items. We have marked down every item in every department. Come to Dorsey Furniture during our fall clearance sale and you won't be disappointed. Dorsey Furniture, Route 1A, Holden. Two steak and egg, two chicken and waffle. How long? Two minutes, three minutes. It's like a car auction. A fiery brunch challenge. I want to win, right? Which team goes down in flames? Leave it. I'm done. Get out. All new Hell's Kitchen. Then. Here we go. You're going to lava this challenge. Complete with a Lego. Masters first. Wow. This never happened before. All new Lego Masters after an all new Hell's Kitchen. Tonight on Fox. All right, now let's turn things over to Devin Dagnall, who's at the Bangor Histor Historical Society to talk about an upcoming event. Hey there, Devin. Thanks, I'm Ann Craig. I'm here at the Bangor Historical si Society with Matt Bishop. Matt, how are we doing today? Hey, doing great, having a great morning. Awesome, well, you were telling me a little bit off air about the ghost tours. Can you tell me what's going on this month? Yeah, um, our ghostly Bangor and Dark Bangor walking tours have been so popular continuing them. We have still have a lot of dates available throughout the month of October for our Ghostly Bangor tours and our Darker Mount Hope tours are going to be on October 27th and 28th. Tickets are still available. We, this is the tour where we do have waves of people leaving at a time. So on our website, you are signing up for your wave time, but tickets are still available to go enjoy that great resource of Bangor. Now those two tours, they're completely separate experiences, completely different experiences. Can you tell me about the, the downtown Bangor one first? Yeah, uh, the downtown Bangor one is obviously Bangor and its downtown is so historic. We're talking about the spookier happening, some of the more um, legends of those ghosts that we would have here in Bangor, talking about some of the buildings like here in the Hill House, the Bangor House, and uh, West Market Square has quite a few different uh, stories as well. Really? Yes. Any that stick out to you? Um, there is um, a hotel, not to give a certain 
story away, but mm. um, has always been rumored to be haunted for many, many years and okay. uh, very familiar. And there's also another spot uh, downtown that we're actually celebrating, not celebrating, but um, the anniversary is today of the former oh. public enemy number one, Al Brady, being uh, caught by the FBI in 1937. I remember that. Okay. And so that's downtown Bangor. Tell me about the Hope Valley Cemetery. Yeah, the Mount Hope Tour is a great one where we're going through the second oldest garden cemetery in the country, talking about those that may still be around in the cemetery, making their presence known, but also still having this all rooted in the historical facts. And mm -hmm. it's not often you get a guided tour of Mount Hope Cemetery starting at 6 o'clock at night and in the dark but uh, it's just been so great, and Mount Hope is just such a true treasure. And you said some of those that might still be around, as I understand, you have uh, some representation. There, We definitely have our volunteer storytellers that are telling the stories of the inhabitants there. There are several that are rumored and have been claimed to have seen mm -hmm. uh, walking still around the cemetery today. Okay. So um, what can people expect during that tour? Uh, tell me a little bit more. So for, um, they can definitely expect a short little walk. It's about a mile. It's about an hour and a half. But um, to go through the cemetery and talking about the inhabitants, talking about the ghost stories that we have, because um, being as old of a city as we are, we do have a, some great cities. And also with the help of a certain author up the street from us, <laughs> um, some of these legends do have uh, truth behind them and then have been expounded upon for so much. And there's a lot of these legends that if you've lived in Bangor your entire life or 10, 20 years, you've probably heard these one way or another, um, but just expounding on these and um, you never know what you're going to see. All right, guys, come check it out in downtown Bangor. Back to you, Emma and Craig. I have to go to one of those tours myself, you know. I'm looking at them right now. There's yeah. one tonight. There's one on the 15th, 17th, 19th and others in the future so i'm yeah. i'm jealous i just need one on a friday or a saturday personally do but. the cemetery tour after dark it might be kind of freaky good I've for done, halloween i've done that one have you it's amazing yeah i love it so i i vouch for everything he's saying they do a great job very neat you check out the bangor historical society's website for more information yep in the meantime we're going to turn our attention now to the weather kind of another cloudy day out there devin biggs He's got the All righty, thank you very much. Happy Thursday. A full weather forecast brought to you by Joe's Market. Discover Joe's Market, 102 Garland Street in Bangor. Your one-stop shop for groceries, fine wines, and craft beers. Quality and variety await you at Joe's. Already areas of dense fog developing in some spots this morning, reducing visibility to so about a half mile or even less this morning. So definitely make sure to have those low beam lights or fog lights only. Do not use, use those high beam lights. Those will make it harder to see. But otherwise, take it slow and allow ex extra time to get to where you're going this morning. Otherwise, though, we've watched for some showers across Washington County last night as well. We have a few more showers starting to develop in a few spots as well. There's a few small returns. But we'll be watching for more shower chances as we head towards the afternoon period. As we zoom things on, give you the bigger picture. Here's that area of low pressure that continues to sit and spin, but slowly tracking off towards the east. So this will give us a chance for a few showers as we head towards the afternoon period. But otherwise, though, across parts of the Midwest, a lot of showers and thunderstorms developing this morning. This system right here could dump inches of rainfall in many spots today, so they will need to watch for that. But otherwise, though, future cast here at home, a mixture of clouds, maybe some sunshine today, showers possible during the afternoon period as well. Overnight tonight, though, some of the clouds will break up for a while to reveal some clear skies, which may allow temperatures to cool off for a little bit as well. Then for your Friday, maybe a few showers, especially on the eastern side of the state, maybe a few reaching Bangor later on at around 6 o'clock or so. But otherwise, though, we'll start to see the clouds break up a little bit more as we head towards early Saturday morning, but notice the gusty winds as well. Not much gusty winds to worry about today, though, so we're at least looking pretty good in that department. It's really as we head towards your Friday that we will have to watch for more gusty winds that can reach up to around 15, maybe 20 miles per hour in spots, possibly even up to 25 miles per hour before we're all finished up. Average high temperature is 60 degrees. We'll do the lower 60s for us today. Upper 50s Friday, back into 60s Saturday. Uh, 50s again as we head towards Sunday, Monday to Tuesday, and remaining into 50s as we head towards your Wednesday as well. And a new fall foliage report did come in.
trend, though. Very small change, though, and it actually affects Greenville. They are now reporting at peak right now, so Greenville is now at peak. Millinocka and Bangor are not quite there just yet, but they're getting closer. And, of course, Caribou remaining at peak, at least for the time being. So for today, lower 60s, mostly cloudy, some showers out there, and that west wind getting up to around 5 miles per hour. By tonight, lower 40s, party cloudy, a few showers out there, and that west breeze at around 5 miles per hour. Tomorrow, upper 50s, party cloudy, with a few showers out there, that northwest wind gusting up to around 25 miles per hour. Alrighty, here's a look at your extended forecast brought to you by Joe's Market. For party cloudy on Saturday with highs in the low 60s, upper 50s for your Sunday, mostly cloudy with a slight chance for showers, and mostly cloudy on Monday, highs in the mid 50s. Comfy, cozy, relaxing. Not Joe. Joe's Furniture. Joe's Furniture Warehouse in Newport is the place to find rockers, recliners, sofas, and easy chairs. Quality furniture, affordable prices. Not your average Joe. Joe's Furniture Warehouse, Grogan Avenue in Newport. Let's face it, getting training and experience is hard, but at Loring Job Corps, we can help. From certifications in automotive technology, obtaining your CDL, or learning building trades, we have you covered. Maybe you prefer joining the high-tech world of computer networking or cybersecurity. We have that as well. Don't delay. Get in the driver's seat to your future today. And the best part? Loring Job Corps is free. Receive free training, free meals, and even free housing. Call or go to jobcorp.gov slash Loring. Job Corps careers begin here. It's another exciting year of high school football in the state of Maine. Get out and support your home team and be looking for the ABC7 Sports Blitz crew. You can get a free Sports Blitz t-shirt, then watch Sports Blitz during ABC7 News at 11 every Friday night during the football season. Blitz shirts courtesy of Coastal Auto Parts, Sear North Star Tours, Graphics Sign and Design, Loring Job Corps, Old Town Redemption, O&J Folsom Incorporated, and Top Notch Detailing. 25 words or less. Cereal bowl. Killer. Catch eerie new episodes. I love Lisa's response to cereal. Killer. Do not have breakfast with Lisa. <laughs> Full of frightful fun. Monster. Dracula. Zombie. Um, Frankenstein. Yes! And tons of treats. A widow. Widower. Five days a week. We're going on with another $10,000. Wow! Weekdays at 9 on Fox 22. Durable, sturdy, stylish, not Joe, Joe's Furniture. Joe's Furniture Warehouse in Newport is the place to find solid wood, built to last, made in main dressers, bureaus, and nightstands. Not your average Joe. Joe's Furniture Warehouse, Grogan Avenue in Newport. We are now roughly four weeks away from the third Republican presidential primary debate. In order to qualify, participating candidates must meet a number of requirements, including securing 4% of the vote in multiple national polls. The latest Fox News poll shows several candidates reaching the quota, with Nikki Haley seeing a surprising jump in polling since the last debate. Fox News correspondent Lauren Green has the latest from the campaign trail. So I've set a very clear criteria. I want to see movement in the polls uh, by Thanksgiving. Former Arkansas Governor Asa Hutchinson once again saying he may drop out of the Republican presidential primary race if he doesn't see a bump in his poll numbers. His remarks came just moments after he became the first nationally recognized candidate to file for the primary in New Hampshire. I think it's reasonable, and uh, let's see uh, what happens between now and then. According to the latest Fox News polls, there might not be a lot happening for Hutchinson at all. He doesn't even register among the top five GOP candidates. Former President Trump continues to maintain his commanding lead, with 59 percent of GOP primary voters supporting him. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis comes in at a distant second with 13 percent, while former U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley registers her best showing yet with 10 percent support, a five-point increase from September. The level of support that we have, I don't think it's ever, we've never seen anything like it. Bigger than 2016, bigger than 2020. Despite a job approval rating stuck at 41 percent, President Biden is still the preferred choice in a hypothetical head-to-head -head matchup with Trump among registered voters. DeSantis, however, gets a two-point edge over Biden, and Haley tops him by four points. Though no candidate is truly leading as each matchup is within the survey's margin of error. This poll was taken nearly two weeks after the second GOP primary debate. Numbers could all change by the time the third debate kicks off in Miami, November 8th. In New York, Lauren Green, Fox News. 
Meanwhile, Republicans are one step closer to electing a new Speaker of the House, but their nominee still needs to shore up support before they hold an official House vote. Fox News correspondent Rebecca Castor has the latest on that story from Washington. Republicans are putting up House Majority Leader Steve Scalise for House Speaker after he beat conservative firebrand Jim Jordan 113 to 99 in a closed door vote Wednesday. But it's unclear if the Louisiana congressman can lock down the additional votes needed to win the gavel after Kevin McCarthy's abrupt removal. Look, Steve's going to have to talk with him, see what the concerns are. Uh, but uh, I'm supporting Steve. Republicans are trying to avoid another lengthy vote on the House floor. In January, it took five days and 15 rounds of votes for McCarthy to win the speakership. Scalise needs 217 votes, but some Republican holdouts could draw this out. I think that there's a problem with leadership in our conference. Republicans are voting for Jim Jordan. Others have concerns over Scalise's health. He's currently undergoing treatment for a form of blood cancer. I think he's going to beat cancer. I absolutely do, but I want him to be able to dedicate all of his time doing that uh, for his wife and for his kids. And Speaker of the House is such a demanding position. While he lost the nomination, Jordan is encouraging his colleagues to rally behind the party's pick. It's important we're back functioning as a House of Representatives. We need a speaker, and Steve is the guy for that. The vacant speaker seat becoming a larger concern as the war between Israel and Hamas intensifies. The sooner there's a speaker of the House, obviously the, the more comfortable we'll all be. Lawmakers have not yet signaled when they plan to hold an official vote for speaker. The House is back in session Thursday afternoon. In Washington, Rebecca Castor, Fox News. Police release a sketch of a person of interest in a murder case in Vermont. The sketch depicts a white man, 5 foot 10, with short red hair. A person witnesses say they encountered before discovering the body of Honoré Fleming on a trail in Castleton, Vermont, last Thursday. Fleming is a retired dean and a professor at Vermont State University in Castleton. The investigation into, in, into his shooting and subsequent death remain under investigation. Well, meanwhile, negotiations between striking actors and major Hollywood studios are now suspended. The Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers says the gap between the two sides is, quote, too great. The studios say the Screen Actors Guild's recent proposal would cost more than $800 million annually. The Screen Actors Guild went on strike almost three months ago. The union's demands include artificial intelligence role in the entertainment industry and also increased compensation. The studios also say they hope that the union will return to productive negotiations very soon. In the meantime, they'll continue to walk the picket line. Seems like it. Yeah. All right, coming up on the second half of the newscast, we'll check out a giant pumpkin named Snoop Gord, who's residing in VZ. It's some pumpkin, too. We'll have that story <laughs> and more as Good Morning Maine continues. Hammond Lumber Company has been a trusted partner of professional contractors, do-it-yourselfers, and homeowners for generations. It's the level of trust that Hammond Lumber has earned by providing an extensive selection of products and materials from industry-leading suppliers with guidance and support through every stage of any project, including delivery of materials throughout Maine and New Hampshire. Hammond Lumber Company is, has been, and will always be your building project partner. Saving for higher education for my kids is super important to my husband and me because we obviously want to give them opportunities to explore whatever their passion might be. I kind of consider it as a non-negotiable. I have to pay my electric bill, I've got to pay my heat bill, and I'm going to put money aside for my kids' higher education. To learn more about NextGen 529, its investment objectives, risks, and costs, read the program description at nextgenforme.com. Check if your home state has a 529 plan that offers tax or other benefits. You're watching Fox 22, Bangor. Welcome back to Good Morning Maine. Today is Thursday, October 12th, 2023. It's also National Farmer Day. The profession of farming began thousands of years ago with the domestication of livestock. Hunter gatherers were settling down to raise and plant their own food. Farmers continue to contribute to our nation's economic growth while also keeping the rest of us fed. 
Originally referred to as Old Farmers Day, National Farmers Day was established to celebrate the hard work that farmers put into their growing crops every year. We couldn't live without them. They, they keep us all fed. They don't really have a day off either. They kind of work sun up till sundown yeah, and there's always job. something happening. Yeah. Yep. So pat a farmer on the back if you see one today. Right. Yeah. All right, so on this day in history, in 1892, the Pledge of Allegiance was first recited in American schools. In 1901, President Theodore Roosevelt changed the name of the Executive Mansion in Washington to the White House. And in 1937, federal agents gunned down Al Brady and members of his gang during a shootout in downtown Bangor. He had been named one of the FBI's public enemies and is now buried in Mount Hope Cemetery. I don't know if the Bangor Historical Society's Mount Hope Cemetery tours show where he is, because I took the tour a couple years ago, like I said, and I don't remember him being in that tour. Yeah, I'm not sure. It's a popular thing, though. I know a lot of people head out there even to this day to see where he's buried and just to learn about that crazy time in right. Bangor's history. Right. I think it's you can easily find it, but it's it was unmarked when mm -hmm. he was killed. So I don't know. Yeah, there's a lot of maps online and things like that, though. Right. And I think they recently put up an, uh, some kind of a sign down by his grave. Okay. I'll have to look into that, but I think they put up like, like a little street sign or some marker. Now so I'll have to look because yeah. I love walking there, so I'll have to see. Yeah, we'll check it out. All right, meanwhile, in 1989, the U.S. House approved a statutory federal ban on the destruction of the American flag, making it illegal to destroy the American flag. Mm -hmm. In 2000, the USS Cole was attacked by suicide bombers while docked in Yemen. That blast ripped a 40-foot hole in the side of the destroyer and killed 17 sailors. came several months before 9-11 uh, when the Cole happened. People just couldn't believe that that was happening, and then, of course, things changed, went downhill from there. Right. Yeah. Yep. All right, today's birthdays include actor Hugh Jackman, who's 55, broadcast journalist Chris Wallace is 76, and Olympic gold medal ski racer Bodie Miller is 46. Happy birthday to all of them. It looks like kind of like their college or high school photos right. all right there, too. You said that um, Bodie Miller, he would ski in Sugarloaf? Yeah, they used to yeah. practice, and they had they had um, different races at Sugarloaf, too. But, right. you know, he kind of got his start here in the Northeast learning how to ski and, right. and uh, was ripping it up on the, the trails around here. Yeah, they they say, mm -hmm. you know, if you get your start in on the East Coast for mm -hmm. skiing and snowboarding, you can ski and snowboard anywhere because we don't yeah. really have the perfect conditions for powder all the time. So icy. Right, yeah. so yeah. you have to get used to the, kind of the toughest conditions. Yeah. So yeah. makes makes a good athlete out of you. It was fun to watch him through his career, though. And yeah. So we wish him a very happy birthday. Yeah. Okay, uh, switching gears now. Um, not skiing weather today, no. thankfully. Here's Devin Biggs with the <laughs> forecast. All righty, thank you very much. Happy Thursday. Your first weather forecast brought to you by Joe's Market. Discover Joe's Market, 102 Garland Street in Bangor. Your one-stop shop for groceries, fine wines, and craft beers. Quality and variety await you at Joe's. As we get into things this morning, areas of dense fog is developing out there. At least at this point, though, no dense fog advisories are posted. But either way, be careful with the fog out there this morning. A half mile or less visibility definitely being noted out there in many spots, which will make it hard to see at times. But otherwise, though, we're going to be watching out for some showers. Just like we had a little bit last night across parts of Washington County. It looks like a few more showers developing in some spots, too. But we'll be watching for more of that, especially as we head towards the afternoon period. As we zoom things out, doesn't look like much right now. Just a few scattered showers in some spots. But we'll start to see more development, though, during the afternoon period, especially over us. So definitely make sure to have the umbrellas handy whenever you head outside. So clouds say to those showers developing during the afternoon period, some of those lingering, especially in the evening as well. Maybe a few breaks in the clouds as we head towards early Friday morning. So at least it won't be raining all the time, right? But as for the winds, not too bad today, roughly at around 5 miles per hour at best. But we'll start to notice an, an increase in the winds as we head towards tomorrow, possibly some sustained winds up to 12, maybe 15 miles per hour in a few spots. So for today, lower sea. It's mostly cloudy, some showers out there, and that west wind getting up to around 5 miles per hour. Your hourly forecast for the rest of the morning and afternoon period. Mostly cloudy skies, showers moving in for the afternoon period. Temperatures in the 60s. Your full five-day forecast is coming up. All right, thank you, Devin. Well, a local woman has been growing pumpkins so rotund, even Charlie Brown couldn't miss them. Our Devin Dagnall went to VZ yesterday to bring us the story. Grew two pumpkins this year. One was named Goose and one was named Snoop Gord. That's Sarah Whitty, and she's been growing giant vegetables out of this VZ backyard for almost a decade. 
Recently, she brought her two pumpkins to the Damariscotta Pumpkin Fest and the Deerfield Fair, where her pumpkin Snoop Gourd won the Howard Dill Award, which means it was the best looking pumpkin at the fair. Snoop Gourd was my pride and joy. He was a beautiful pumpkin. Um, most times the giant pumpkins are kind of ugly. Snoop Gourd was a perfect shape, round, beautiful, vibrant orange. And pumpkins aren't even Witty's only giant vegetable. Up here on her 14 foot trellis, She's growing long gourds, which start off like these little green beans, but after a few weeks can grow to be over 10 feet long. They're just really long and weird and just another weird fun thing to grow. This year and for the first time, Witty grew a giant vegetable a lot like a zucchini called a marrow, which set a state record at 60.5 pounds. This year I was the only person to grow in Maine this year, but I'm hoping it encourages other growers to try and beat me so that I can try and beat them again and, and do better. Of course, the question on everyone's mind, do these giant vegetables ever become a giant meal? Can you eat them? Probably, um, like if you were dying, but it, <laughs> typically we don't. Well, since Snoop Gord won't be ending up on any dinner plates anytime soon, Woody plans on taking it on tour to show everyone around this state's prettiest pumpkin. In VZ, Devin Dagnall, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. And she has the perfect license plate, too, right. for what she's doing. Pumpkins riding off into the sunset. Pretty neat. Yep. All right, still to come here this morning, a vigil was held at dusk yesterday on the UMaine campus. Actually, we've already had the story, correct? Yeah, we'll have the rest of the day's news coming up right yeah. after this. Don't go away. headquarters we see the world differently you might see a sunny road but we see the treacherous road it could become in winter so to prepare you we're holding the toyota all-wheel drive savings event with thousands of toyotas to choose from you can get a 2024 corolla with 750 dollars financing cash plus get two years no cost maintenance and more the event ends october 31st so see your new england toyota dealer your all-wheel drive headquarters toyota let's go places for your dream home? Contact a next homie today and see what's available right now. Sellers, get ready to get looped and get sold. With Next Home Experience, we have your buyers. The Maine Black Bears take on the LIU Sharks this Saturday at 1 on Fox 22. It was an exciting morning at the East End School in Portland as the Department of Education dropped off some new hardware. Johnny Maffey introduces us to Maine's 2024 Teacher of the Year. We celebrate your love of teaching, your dedication to your students. We thank you for having high expectations for yourself and for your students. East End Community School second and third grade teacher Joshua Chard is Maine's 2024 Teacher of the Year. The reigning champ, also in the Portland school system, has high praise. The pride he has in being part of this community shines through in everything he says and everything he does. Casco Bay High School teacher Matt Bernstein says you can't win Teacher of the Year without such a good school around you. Mr. Char sees the best in his students, colleagues, and community and speaks up for them. 
Before the top teacher took the podium, his students showed their praise. The UNE grad says school wasn't always easy for him. And then I met my fifth grade teacher, Mrs. Bro. At times with watery eyes, Chard thanked his family, colleagues, students, and of course his teachers. The most important thing that Mrs. Bro taught me were that I was smart, I was talented, and that I deserved to be loved just for being me. Something he still lives by and why he takes pride in the community that is the East End Community School. The ordinary that happens every day behind closed doors in classrooms that no one really knows about or sees is actually extraordinary. The little things make a big impact. I want to be talking about what extraordinary things happen in high needs, diverse urban schools. I'm going to be the spokesperson for the families and the students who don't necessarily always have the opportunity to speak up for themselves and be celebrated. Boy, congratulations wow. to him. Congratulations yeah. to all the nominees. Um, you know, he's getting a lot of the attention right now, but we have teachers throughout the state who are putting themselves on the line and yeah. going above and beyond all the time just to help our kids. From the way he speaks, though, I can tell why he won an yeah. award, though. I mean, he's using his clout there mm -hmm. to speak up and do well for other people, and, and that's what true leaders are. He's got the passion. You need right. that. So, right. Yeah. Love to see it. Okay, coming up next, we'll hear from the owner of Governors on their upcoming fundraiser in Old Town. Don't go away. We've been in business for 31 years, and our employees and guests are like family. We've worked hard, and they've worked hard. That's why question three worries me. It puts our power grid in the hands of politicians. It costs $13.5 billion. That's billion with a B. Can you believe that? That could mean higher taxes for all of us. It's bad for our business and it's bad for Maine. Question three is a risk Maine can't afford. Jerry's Used Cars has been a family owned business for more than 30 years, currently in Corinna and Vizi. However, we have changed a little as we are no longer just a buy here, pay here dealership. We now have access to outside financing and also carry utility trailers. We would be happy to assist you with your next vehicle purchase. And don't forget, here at Jerry's Used Cars, we offer an extended warranty. So give us a call at either our Corinna or VZ location. Now what? You say it when things get out of hand. At Prudential, we think you should say it when you hand down something valuable too. Like when you realize a recipe is just one gift you can give them. Ask, now what? Here's what. You get life insurance from Prudential and help protect your family like you protect a family recipe. Who's your rock? Ask your employer about Prudential benefits or speak to an advisor today. It's another exciting year of high school football in the state of Maine. Get out and support your home team and be looking for the ABC7 Sports Blitz crew. You can get a free Sports Blitz t-shirt, then watch Sports Blitz during ABC7 News at 11 every Friday night during the football season. Blitz shirts courtesy of Art Service Center, Color Concepts, Eddington Store, First National Bank, Maine Collision Center, Top Notch Detailing, Twin City Nutrition, and Twin City Tile. Welcome back to Good Morning Maine. I'm here with Jason Clay. He's the owner of Governor's Restaurant, and they're soon to do a fundraiser for an Old Town food pantry. Jason, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Emma. I appreciate being here. Of course. So what's this fundraiser for? So uh, Monday, October 16th, is World Hunger Day, yeah. and uh, we're excited to partner with the Caring Community Cupboard in Old Town to do a fundraiser day yeah. uh, to help them out. Cool. So is this, do people bring non-perishables? What's, how do they help fundraise? Absolutely. So we're donating 10% of our sales from uh, 11 in the morning to 8 at night cool. uh, to the CCC. Uh, you can also bring some non-perishables if you want to donate. They will, we'll have a collection table there. If you want to donate money, you're more than welcome to do that as well. Um, but nice. uh, it's not only dine-in, if you want to order takeout, we'll uh, count that as well towards that. Uh, we're hoping to raise some awareness and uh, really make it a big deal for uh, to highlight you know such a huge problem in our community right yeah I, I, I definitely feel that and it's kind of only gotten worse the past couple of years absolutely um, it's it's great to see so many 
community organizations such as the, the Care and Community Cupboard step up to meet that need. It's really sad that there's such a huge need uh, for that in our communities and it, it seems that it's not getting any better. Right, yeah. 10 percent is a pretty sizable donation from, from profits though, so that's awesome. I'm sure you guys will put a d big dent there. But um, when is this going to be again? Yeah, so uh, happy to help. It's uh, Monday, October 16th and uh, we're uh, going to do it from 11 to 8 at night. It'll be at our Old Town uh, restaurant, the original Governor's. Old Town specifically, that's right? right. So not all of them. Yep, okay. absolutely. Cool. So, um, and Caring Community Cupboard, do you know um, where can people reach out if they want to learn more? Absolutely. I know they have a really good Facebook presence, so you can uh, check them out there. They're located uh, right on Main Street in Old Town. Um, I believe Tuesdays is when they are open to the public. Okay. Um, you can stop in and, and uh, ask questions and, and see what they might have to offer. Cool. Um, and they're always looking for volunteers as well right. uh, for that. So it's, it's certainly a huge need, and, and they've really stepped up to meet that need. Yeah, so if you need some help or if you want to help them, they're available and, and ready to hear from you. Cool. Jason, thanks for joining us this yeah, morning. Thanks for having me. Of course. All right, we'll send it over to weather. All righty, thank you very much. Happy Thursday. Your full weather forecast brought to you by Joe's Market. Discover Joe's Market, 102 Garland Street in Bangor. Your one-stop shop for groceries, fine wines, and craft beers. Quality and variety await you at Joe's. Already areas of dense fog developing in some spots this morning, reducing visibility to so about a half mile or even less this morning. So definitely make sure to have those low beam lights or fog lights only. Do not use, use those high beam lights. Those will make it harder to see. But otherwise, take it slow and allow extra time to get to where you're going this morning. Otherwise, though, we've watched for some showers across Washington County last night as well. We have a few more showers starting to develop in a few spots as well as a few small returns. But we'll be watching for more shower chances as we head towards the afternoon period. If we zoom things out and give you the bigger picture, here's that area of low pressure that continues to sit and spin, but slowly tracking off towards the east. So this will give us a chance for a few showers as we head towards the afternoon period. But otherwise, though, across parts of the Midwest, a lot of showers and thunderstorms developing this morning. This system right here could dump inches of rainfall in many spots today, so they will need to watch for that. But otherwise, though, future cast here at home, a mixture of clouds, maybe some sunshine today, showers possible during the afternoon period as well. Overnight tonight, though, some of the clouds will break up for a while to reveal some clear skies, which may allow temperatures to cool off for a little bit as well. Then for your Friday, maybe a few showers, especially on the eastern side of the state, maybe a few reaching Bangor later on at around 6 o'clock or so. But otherwise, though, we'll start to see the clouds break up a little bit more as we head towards early Saturday morning, but notice the gusty winds as well. Not much gusty winds to worry about today, though, so we're at least looking pretty good in that department. It's really as we head towards your Friday that we will have to watch for more gusty winds that can reach up to around 15, maybe 20 miles per hour in spots, possibly even up to 25 miles per hour before we're all finished up. Average high temperature is 60 degrees. We'll do the lower 60s for us today, upper 50s Friday, back in the 60s Saturday. Uh, 50s again as we head towards Sunday, Monday to Tuesday, and remaining in the 50s as we head towards your Wednesday as well. And a new fall foliage report did come in, though. Very small change, though, and it actually affects Greenville. They are now reporting at peak right now, so Greenville is now at peak. Millinocka and Bangor are not quite there just yet, but they're getting closer. And, of course, Caribou remaining at peak, at least for the time being. So for today, lower 60s, mostly cloudy, some showers out there, and that west wind getting up to around 5 miles per hour. By tonight, lower 40s, party cloudy, a few showers out there and that west breeze at around five miles per hour tomorrow upper 50s party cloudy with a few showers out there that northwest wind gusting up to around 25 miles per hour Alrighty, here's a look at your extended forecast brought to you by joe's market for party cloudy on saturday with highs in the low 60s upper 50s for your sunday mostly cloudy with a slight chance for showers and mostly cloudy on monday highs in the mid 50s all right thank you devin and that's all the time we have for today we thank you for joining us and we hope you have a wonderful day From a gallon of gas to a gallon of milk, everything costs more these days. And question three will make things worse. It'll cost billions and we'll be on the hook for it. It will increase our electric bills. And question three, it doesn't require an operations plan, not even for emergencies or power outages. Question three is too costly and too risky for my family. I'm voting no on three. It's a bad idea for Maine. With Chevy Silverado and Silverado HD, you can take on the mountains.
or you can move them. With the power of up to 36,000 pounds of max available towing and the confidence of an available 13.4 inch diagonal touchscreen, whatever your mountain, there's a Silverado for you. Get 0% financing plus make no monthly payments for 90 days on all 2023 Silverado 1500 pickups. Plus get 1,000 cash allowance on this Silverado. Visit your main Chevy dealer. Looking for a convenient place to get that big fitness energy? It's Planet Fitness. You know it. Now through October 13th, you can join for just $1 down, $10 a month. We've got over 2,400 locations with most open 24 hours. Join now to enjoy free fitness training and equipment for every workout. Whether you're new to a gym or a fitness pro, the Judgment Free Zone is the place for you. Join Planet Fitness today for $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment. Cancel any time. Deal ends October 13th. Oh, yeah, that's the energy. Mesothelioma is more than a ravaging illness. It is a disease that can ruin a family's finances and is never the victim's fault. The law offices of Joe Bornstein has been fighting and winning for Maine families for nearly 50 years, and we've collected over $500 million for injured Mainers. If you or a loved one is a victim of mesothelioma or asbestos-related lung cancer, call Joe today for a free case evaluation and to learn about your family's legal rights. Dial 207-CALL-JOE or online at joebornstein.com. Fire! <laughs>